So in this video we'll learn relations between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial. This is a prerequisite lesson for exercise 2.2. Let us start. So in the previous video we learned some polynomials, their graphs and what you mean by zeros of the polynomial. Now in this video we'll see the relation between zeros of the polynomial and the coefficients of a polynomial. So we'll start with linear polynomials first. Linear polynomials, as you already know, are those polynomials in which we can write polynomial as ax plus b, where a is a real number, b is a real number, a can't be zero, other than that it can have any value, and b can be any real number. So such polynomials make straight lines, right? This we have learnt in previous video. Such polynomials make straight lines and the point where they intersect x-axis, that point is called zero of this polynomial. And when we put that point in place of x, the whole value of the polynomial becomes zero. Now, this point is called the zero of the polynomial and is denoted by symbol alpha. So alpha is a Greek alphabet like we have A, B, C, D. Similarly, in Greek alphabetic system, we have alpha, beta, gamma, delta like these alphabets. So this zero of the polynomial is denoted by the symbol alpha. And this alpha is equal to minus B by A. Always this alpha will be equal to minus B by A. So let us take an example. This is a linear polynomial because it is of the type ax plus b, right? So, what should be the value of this x, this zero of the polynomial? As we have learned, this alpha is always equal to minus b by a. This term is a, the coefficient of x, and this term constant is b, and minus b by a will be minus 5 by 3. So, the zero of this polynomial is minus 5 by 3, and now just We'll check once, we'll put this value here, minus 5 by 3. So in place of x, I'm putting minus 5 by 3. Here also 3 into minus 5 by 3 plus 5. And now what will happen? This 3 will be cancelled with this 3 and minus 5 plus 5 is 0. So it proves that this minus 5 by 3 is the 0 of this polynomial and is equal to minus b by a. So this is the first thing you have learned. In a linear polynomial, there is only one zero of the polynomial and that zero is equal to minus b by a. Okay, so now we'll proceed to quadratic polynomials. Quadratic polynomials are of type ax square plus bx plus c where a, b, c can be any real numbers and a can't be zero other than that it can have any real value. Right, so any polynomial which is quadratic makes a parabola either of this type or this type and this parabola cuts x-axis at two different points intersect x-axis at two different points therefore quadratic polynomials always have two zeros okay those two zeros can be same sometime but generally they have different values and these zeros are denoted by two greek symbols and these symbols are alpha and beta okay so if you put this value of alpha in this equation this whole equation will become zero and similarly if you put the value of x as beta again this whole equation will become zero so this is the quality of these zeros now alpha plus beta is minus b by a you have already learnt it in linear polynomials as well c and now new thing is here that alpha into beta is c by a that is when we multiply these two roots it is always equal to c by a so alpha plus beta is minus b by a and alpha into beta is c by a okay we'll just see this with an example so here we have a quadratic polynomial in which a is 2 you can see ax square then b is minus 8 some students will say b is 8, but no, b is minus 8 and c is 6. 
right so how to find zeros of this quadratic polynomial there is a very simple method what we need to do is we'll split this middle term okay splitting means we'll choose two such terms when we add those terms that should be equal to this minus 8x like i've chosen minus 2x and minus 6x if you add minus 2x and minus 6x it will be minus 8x so we'll choose two such terms whose sum is minus 8x and whose product is equal to product of these two extreme terms okay when we multiply these two terms what it is equal to it is 12x square and minus 2x into minus 6x is also plus 12x square because negative into negative is positive and 2x into cx is 12x square i repeat myself we'll choose two such terms on adding we'll get the this middle term and on multiplying we should get the product of these extreme terms so the product is 12x square and we can check minus 2x into minus 6x is 12x square and let us say uh, some student comes to me and say okay sir why we can't write this thing as minus 4x and minus 4x because minus 4x and minus 4x will also make minus 8x so in that case you check the multiplication the multiplication will be 4 for the 16x square but i do not require 16x square i require 12x square and this requirement is fulfilled by minus 2x and minus 6x only right so let us proceed so in the place of minus 8x i'll write minus 2x and minus 6x i guess there is no problem instead of minus 8x i have written minus 2x minus 6x okay now in this first term i can take two common and x common so when two is taken outside and x is taken outside from this only one x will be remaining then this minus sign and again two x has gone from here so one will be remaining okay similarly out of these two terms minus six i am taking common so if i take minus six from this x only x will be remaining and from this term i have taken 6 outside so here there will be 1 and then i have taken negative common so this will become negative so from a positive term whenever you take minus common then in that case there a negative sign will appear okay or in other words we can say whenever we take negative common outside whatever was negative will become positive and whatever was positive will become negative so these are basic calculation techniques that you must have learnt in smaller classes okay now 2x minus 6 this will write together 2x minus 6 and this x minus 1 will write here or in other words you can say in this whole term and this whole term both these terms have x minus 1 so we can take x minus 1 common and what we are left with is 2x minus 6 so the factors are 2x minus 6 and x minus 1 so this process we'll learn in detail in the next video stay with me okay so this question at least you should be understanding by now so after taking x minus 1 common i am left with 2x minus 6 now since we know we need to find the value of x for which this whole polynomial must be zero right we have learned that once we put the value of zeros in place of x the whole value of polynomial is equal to zero so what we'll do we'll put this polynomial equal to zero and by that we can say either 2x minus 6 is zero or x minus 1 is zero so the rule is that product of two numbers or two factors can be zero only if either this is zero or this is zero so for an example if i say uh, can 4 into 5 be equal to zero so this is a silly question 4 into 5 can never be equal to zero a product can be zero only if 
any one of them is 0. So 0 into 5 can be 0 or 4 into 0 can be 0 but 4 into 5 can never be 0. A product can be 0 only if any of these two is 0. Any number of these two is 0. Similarly, the product of these two factors can be 0 only if any one of these is 0. So either this thing is 0 or this thing is 0. So from this factor 2x minus 6 is equal to 0. I will take this 6 towards RHS. So 2x is equal to 6 and taking 2 at denominator will get 6 by 2 that is 3. And similarly from here x is equal to 1. So we got two values of x that is 3 and 1 and these values 3 and 1 are roots of the polynomial or zeros of the polynomial. What we have learnt earlier is that alpha plus beta is always equal to minus b by a. Let us check. Alpha plus beta means 3 plus 1 that is equal to 4 and minus b by a. What is minus b by a? Let us check. So, yes, this is b. What is b? Minus 8. And what is a? 2. So, minus b by a will be minus of minus 8 because in the formula itself there is negative and b is minus 8. So, minus of minus 8 that is plus 8 by 2 which is 4. And alpha into beta is c by, uh, c by a. So, let us check alpha is 3, beta is 1, 3 into 1 that is 3 should be equal to c by a. And c is 6 from the question. Just check. Here you see c is 6 right and a is 2. So, 6 by 2 is 3. So, what we got alpha plus beta is 4 and minus b by a is also 4. So, alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a. Alpha into beta is 3 and c by a is also 3. So, again we can say that alpha into beta is c by a. Okay. So far we have learned that for a linear polynomial alpha plus beta is minus b by a and for quadratic polynomial alpha plus beta is minus b by a and alpha into beta is c by a. Now we will go towards cubic polynomial. So, this part of the video is only for understanding and it is irrelevant if we talk about the examination. So, a cubic polynomial is a polynomial of type ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus t where a, b, c, d can be any real numbers with a constraint that a can't be 0. Any cubic polynomial will intersect x axis at 3 points and therefore it has 3 roots and alpha plus beta plus gamma is minus b by a. Right. Alpha into beta, beta into gamma, gamma into alpha, the sum of all these is equal to c by a and the product of 3 roots is minus t by a. So, memorize this much and then we will go towards the exercise 2.2. Till then, bye-bye.